Uh, thank you, Andy. My name is Li Wen. Um, for the last six months, we've been helping the sun to work on their web performance. And in that journey, we've learned quite a lot of things. I think I'll walk you through some of the lessons we've learned, mainly from a business point of view and from organization side of things. So I hope you can pick something up and then help you to embark on that journey with your organization. So give you a bit of context about the website. First is a heavy traffic website. You can see the numbers. And we have really big, wide use base. We mainly serve UK, Ireland, and US. But actually, this picture I took from Google Analytics. It tells us that we got users from all over the world, even from New Caledonia. I did a little bit of research, actually. Their download speed, the average internet download speed, is just under half megabyte. You can imagine how they're going to suffer when they load a big site. So, and also our users use the sites in different ways. They, in their breakfasts, or you know, time, and they're on the commute train, or they all over the, they'll probably sometimes read the um, website on their bigger TV, 10 p.m. in the evening. So imagine this is your site. Can you foresee any issues you know, with the performance, or how would you go about to solve it? So of course, if you don't know your problems, you can't really solve anything. So you need to measure. But how fast is your website? I guess for engineers, it's quite easy to answer. You go in the size of your page, you have your network requests and your assets, and that's it. It's easy. To. But again, we have the user-centric metrics we learned earlier. And how do you answer those questions? And if I tell you that, say, my site loads in five seconds, is that fast? Is that fast enough? Actually, that's a tricky question, because that doesn't tell you the full picture of everything. And this is to answer the user-centric metrics. That's the picture you can use. So that's how it works. And for the numbers, actually, you can't use just numbers to answer the question. For business, it's very easy to have numbers because that ties to their KPI. They can easily say, OK, you know, the site loads. And it's good for reporting everything. But actually, the truth lies in the picture, like this diagram. It's percentile. For different users, they have completely different user experience. Depends on your users. You might want to do things differently. And sometimes so things might not be really relevant, although everyone talks about it. So of course, the question is, what is performance really about for you and your business? KPIs or user experience? Actually, it turns out to be both. When you're really focusing on user experience, you improve the KPIs, which makes your business happy. And how did we do it? So basically, you know who your audience really are and who you want to optimize for. So from the first context, we know that 85% of our users are mobile users. So do we need to you know, focus on the bigger computer to see faster CPU, your bigger Mac? Does that even matter? And one of the examples we had is say, OK, every engineer loves good site, you know, everything is uh, properly engineered. You got your polyfilled I.O. to transpire your script. You know lazy load is perfect. And on your bigger map, you don't want to see any font flippering because that's not cool, because it's not perfect. But actually, for our users, for those mobile users especially, they have really bad devices. I think I talked about it before. Actually, all those things cost about 500 milliseconds. Imagine those 500 milliseconds. And also, lazy load. Actually, we don't lazy load. We preload all the fonts, the hero images, and the context. So user actually can see everything straight away. Why do you want your user to actually wait for it? Because that's the most important content. And also, in this space, if you can, you can strive to go the extra mile and I guess for engineers, we need to ask ourselves really hard questions. And the reactor dome, that's over 100 kilobytes. Do you really need that for your user? And Lodash, we love it, but it's a bigger thing. And it, all those express middlewares, do you really need them? And also, so one of the examples is 
we learned that Google, the Chrome actually cached in, uh, JavaScript in 50 kilobytes like chunks and then optimize them and cache them differently. So we did that and we sent all our, uh, the code to our users. And because with our site use HTTP2, so we thought that's definitely fine. But it turned out we have so many users, they do use HTTP1, which for them is five, six extra requests. That's why we didn't want to do it. And we ended up actually did a lot of work to serve ES5, ES6 bundles to different browsers. So for ES6, we split them into small bundles so they can download in HTTP2. But for ES5, it's all transpired thing. So yes, we have async um, in the bundle. And knowing you know, your audience, and then the next is to identify the, the improvement opportunities. Because for this, I think uh, you can see, for us, we had seven different areas our, our, we identified and prioritized based on the direct influence we have. I think quite a lot of times from engineering point of view, you, you jump straight into critical rendering path and all your front end rendering. Actually, there's loads of other areas you can optimize as well. And sometimes, actually, small work, bigger win. So, of course, the last one is uh, your performance budgets. That's almost the most important thing if you want to sell the story to the business and help business to success. Because if you can't tell them you know, what numbers are, they're not going to get buy-in. Come to buy-in. So, who do you need to buy in from? Is that your CEO enough? Is your CTO enough? Actually, it turns out the most of the people you need is the kindred spirits and champions in all the business. You need all their help because in their day-to-day -day job, if they don't know you're working for, imp for the users and if you know, they don't know how important that is, they can't make the day-to-day -day decision actually to facilitate it. Once you have their buy-ins, you'll find it's so much easier to actually get business to understand it. And also, when you work with the different apartments, departments, like commercial, you know, your um, marketing counterparts, actually, you, the best thing is to work with them together, you know, plan your tactics. Sometimes it's not directly related to performance. But if you want a good product, you, if you want to be proud of what you're doing, then you need to work together. Lots of times, yeah, you would make mistakes, but it's okay. It's good to learn and move on. And the other thing, I guess, sort of uh, uh, took us a while to figure out is uh, about your tools. I actually know them. We know we have three types of tools we can measure user um, performance. The first, you know, your lighthouse and web page test, of course, for devs, we all know how to use it. And for the second category, you have them to measure your uh, synthetic uh, stats for your li live site. And then, of course, you have your RAM ones. But when you use those, they all tell you different numbers and different scores. What do they really mean? You know, if we say our users, they use a mobile phone, all from all over the UK and the US, but if those servers, they're sitting in Africa, let's say you've got your data center, bigger computers running there, would all those numbers even matter? Are they really your users? Do you know if, you know, are your users are suffering the same issue as they? Some of the scores, they say, you know, let's say the, um, Google Lighthouse performance score, I think now once, uh, based on the new uh, algorithm, it's 30 points, it's from time to interactive and the speed index. But for a bigger site, if everything loads good and everything, you know, your user experience is good. So it's for your business, is that even matter, that score? Or oh, it's just a question, I guess, only you can answer. And of course, keep learning and keep evolving as we did, like for the impulse, we used to report in 95 percentile to the business, week by week, which is all fine, because that was the default percentile impulse shows. So we used it, but I think uh, then we discovered, you know, a lot of good work we did for the user experience, it didn't uh, materialize in that report. And then we found out that actually, 
in the 75 percentile and the 90 percentile, we made a huge improvement, but no 95 percentile because people all over the world sometimes, you know, take them 12 seconds to get the first time to bite. Of course, yeah, it comes to performance budgets. I think uh, I've read it quite a lot online. They tells you, you know, what numbers you can measure, what time, um, like time stamps you can measure stuff, and it's quite easy to implement. But what is missing is actually how that affects your business or how it affects your story. And so this is probably everyone see this picture already. It's really easy to implement. We we'll use web page test to. Uh, simulate our real users get the ish, you know why they're suffering the ish things and then we have dev tools to do development and then we uh, commit the code we use lighthouse for synthetic test and we put the data into datadog for dashboards and we store the historical data in s3 bucket and then we release it to production and we use mpos to do the ram stats and then the cycle goes on so it's quite easy but then again, this, you probably can easily tell how much you use, you know, your um, website, the JavaScript uses, how much. But what about the other departments, actually? Because your website is your product, everyone has a share in it. If they have hundreds of tags, how you measure that, how you can tell what's the, you know, what impact that had on the user. So that's sort of, you need, that's why you need buy-ins from people all over the business, so they can help you, they can think about it, and then they can report it. Yeah? So it uh, comes to, I guess, when working with a third party, one thing we've learned is to be ruthless. Those are the questions, actually, personally, I've asked the third parties. And I've asked, actually, our internal business, some of the departments, they have widget stuff. So this is, uh, you know, it's all good. Ask the question because you're for doing things for your users. And then the most important thing is try to work together. Sometimes they just don't have the resource. They don't have the knowledge. It's not because they don't care. And quite a lot of things, if you take initiative, you help them and they help you. And uh, so we talked about a few things we learned from a business side of you know, point of view, how they can help us. And I'll show you a picture of some of the results. So you can see, actually, it's a quite, uh, how to say, happy result. But with this, there's something missing in this result. Can anyone tell? OK. Has it changed its behavior? Yes, that's one side. That's good. And actually, the mm, bit missing is the percentile. We don't know, those are, you know which users we're measuring against. Are they our real users? This is actually 95% of our users, yeah. And then this is uh, another uh, diagram uh, picture I took from Google Search Console. So I think, uh, you know, we've read quite a lot of places, Google or other search engine tell us, if you do the right thing for your user, we'll do the rest. And I think in May, Google changed their SEO ranking algorithm, and you can see we had a good, really good lift. And then the impression, the click rates all mm, increased. Really, I guess, you know, for us, it was a quite good result. But is this the end of the journey? You know, we've done good work. Everything is, how to say, good. Actually, far from that. Because performance is actually it's a constant uh, um, you know, issue. It's, it's something like, I think, uh, I read somewhere in our Slack channel, actually, I really like it, saying <coughs> things like this, it's actually like your garden. You know, you plant trees, you need to keep maintaining it, give them love, and then you can actually make a difference. Otherwise, you'll be doing this, okay, then people are gonna slide back, and then you're not gonna get anything. So, yeah, that's, I guess, uh, for our, you know, journey in, on this some performance work. And the last thing, if you <laughs> liked any of the things that we've done or liked the, our attitude, further user or anything, we have plenty of openings. And you're more than welcome to talk to us afterwards. So that's all my talk.